yes, exactly that. You can't control if you're in a plane that's now crashing down to the lab. Please stop reading plane references. Hello lovely people, welcome to my YouTube channel, Hey Spring Chicken, my name is Cordelia and I'm in my early 60s and I want to thank you, the returning viewers and the new subscribers, we hit 701 this morning and oh my god that is so exciting, in YouTube terms that's small, to us it's blowing our mind, I promise you. Today's topic is how do I stay on top every day consistently when I don't feel good, I don't feel confident, and life just gets in the way. Faking it till I make it. So a little disclaimer, today we're going to cover a few topics and tips, helps to, ways to help you get through, but I'm not a doctor, I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not a physician, so if you feel that it's getting on top of you, life is getting on top of you, just speak to someone, a professional, someone who can help. Recognising ambivalence, not indolence, but ambivalence, and by that I mean you need a compelling reason to change. So, for instance, you want to give up smoking. You can see all these lovely benefits to giving up smoking, but somewhere over here, this other voice is saying to you, oh, well, what am I going to do after a meal? What am I going to do after we've made love? All of that sort of thing. She didn't like that. The voice is saying to you, look, don't change. So that is ambivalence. You haven't got a compelling reason to change. So what I want you to do, and I'm going to give you some just little tips about compelling reasons and how you can change. Some years ago, I made a fairly significant change in my life. There are seven general points that everyone talks about, but I've added two of my own that make the biggest difference to my life and which I do every single day. Number one, let it go. Make that conscious decision to let it go. It can focus, it can sit in there, it can gnarl away, but let it go. Resentments are another way of, of capturing the brain and getting in there and digging and making you feel angry and annoyed. And no one benefits from a resentment or holding on to that negative thought except you. Not even a benefit. No, there's no benefit. The person that you're angry with, oh, I'm going to write them out my life forever. Do they care? No. You care. You may feel you have justifiable, justifiable reason, and you very well might. But I know from actual experience, when I let it go, when I let that awful thing go, and I've had a few things that I need to let go, oh, my God, it's like this weight has lifted off my shoulder, whether it be everyday little things or huge things. Let it go. Right, that's how I look at it. When I say, right, you're either going to let this go or you're going to keep the hold yeah. of it. And when I say that, to me, it's, um, you know, I'm making a decision to not think about it anymore or not let it affect me, not react. I'm really going to try very hard when I edit to not put a picture of Frozen in there or something like that. <laughs> that didn't come into your head at all when you were talking no, about it. There's a whole song, there's a whole thing. Yeah, no, goodness me. So she's no, been, she's been watching that, them. No, no, we're not going down that way. I hate that song. Anyway, um, ignore them. They're big. Two. Ignore them. Years ago, I would find, I would be sitting in a club, pub, whatever, with a whole group of friends, and I would fear going to the toilet because... I'd be scared that they'd be talking about me when I was gone. How ridiculous. I like everybody I meet. I like, well, not everybody, but I like a lot of people. And I'm hoping a lot of people like me. But I know that there are people that don't. I know that I get on people's nerves. I know that. I can't change that. I can't. No amount of people pleasing is going to make them like me. 
So here's the thing, what other people think of you. Sounds weird, I know, but I'm going to say this to you. It's not your business. Don't get involved. Ignore them. It's honestly another sh big boulder off the shoulder. And you're worried they might talk about you and it's like, that's you that thinks that. They probably weren't talking about you at all. A very good point. They probably weren't. It was in my head. When people laugh, when you hear someone laugh, are they laughing at me? Doesn't matter. So don't write this whole story, this whole narrative about it. Just ignore them. Don't build a house on sand. Very much so. Just to add in, I know what I'm suggesting um, sounds easy and easier said than done, but each little change, they only have to be small incremental changes. It takes practice. Three. Give it time. By that, I mean, in our lifetime, we have catastrophic events. We have events that really impact on our health, on our family, on our well-being and everything. And they are fairly impactful things that we don't know what to do. But all I'm saying to you is it, it will pass. I know that sounds really cliched. This too will pass. I, I had some awful news, you know, years ago. And in the moment, I was stuck in the moment. I couldn't imagine a life beyond. I couldn't imagine the day, next day, never mind a life beyond. But it did pass. And here I am. So that's all you can do at that moment when you're stuck in that with that with that thought, with that I can't cope, when life is too much for you, it will pass. I can promise you, it will pass. What I tell myself, whatever I'm feeling this minute, which happened in February, whatever I happen, whatever's happening, it is temporary. Sometimes I don't listen to my own advice, but it is only temporary for don't compare. A lot of my youth growing up was about feeling I wasn't good enough. Someone had it. Someone was better than me. Comparing is, um, you know, jealousy and envy. And I went through a period where I stopped reading Cosmopolitan magazine because my life just didn't match up. It didn't. And when I let that go, when I stopped comparing, and when I looked at what I did have, again, these were the changes that I made some years ago. Honestly, it was that discontented feeling, that just that discontent, that irritability. It just started to go. It didn't happen overnight. But uh, the, the comparing, that is really key. Comparing. Because I promise you, I promise you that what you're seeing, that you're comparing to, isn't real life. And we know that now. When we see behind the scenes on, on social media platforms and we go behind and what we're seeing isn't real, don't compare. It leads you down a very nasty path. Just very quickly, little story. When I was, I remember when I was in my 20s and I used to go out with a big club and I used to think I was really hugely, huge, frat, pig ground crowd of people we would go out to a restaurant and I would sit there and I would chat to my people and I'd look over on the other side of the table because we'd sit there on a table of 15 of us and I'd sit over on the other side of the table and those people on the other side of the table chatting they looked like they were having a better conversation than I was with these people so I thought well I'll go and sit over there so I sit over there and sit with these people that were having the interesting conversation and I'd look back and think no, where I've just come from was more interesting. And that dawned on me in my, I was only 22, 23 at the time. That is a real grass is greener. And it wasn't. Number five, stay calm. Oh, that's difficult for me. I'm ah, so staying calm. So I have an analogy. I would, I, I listen to a pilot landing a plane in a very difficult situation. It was a documentary. And there was this pilot, almost certain death for him and the, and the people in the plane. Did he break his calmness? Absolutely not. He was calm. He was giving this confidence. And I thought, well, heck, if he can stay calm when he's looking at almost certain death, then I'm, 
sure I can stay calm when I'm in, in Waitrose. <laughs> That's our perspective. <laughs> oh, the pharmacy queuing for 45 minutes. Moving on, number six, and that is it's on you. Accountability for your actions, for your happiness. You can't control that you that this feeling of anger is suddenly overtaking you, but you can control how you handle that anger. Yes, exactly that. You can't control if you're in a plane that's now crashing down to the lab. Please stop needing plane references. You cannot control that that baby is crying. You cannot control how the parents handle it. You can't control the noise and it's bugging you, but you can't control how you react to it and how you respond. Okay. Yes, you're getting angry. So what you can either yeah, what are your options? You can either yell at the child, which is you know, which we all want to do, or yell at the parents, mm. or you <clears> can <throat> take yourself away from it and accept that remove yourself. Yeah, from the it's situation. about you know you don't have control over everything, mm-hmm. and that's okay. I say you don't you can't control that you're feeling depressed. You can't control that you're feeling this and the other, but you can control how you respond to it. And that's where accountability comes in. So we're on the aeroplane. Stop, you're in a plane. Okay, we're in a restaurant. Taking yourself out of that situation mentally and being accountable for you. Well, I can't control that. Yes, you can. And this is how. You have a conversation with yourself. You say, you say that child is screaming, children cry. And then you look at, you know, what other things, you know, and then you're like, you know, you're going to let it go. You're going to choose. You are choosing to not react. That's your responsibility. Once you engage that this is annoying, once you, it becomes even more so. You have to downplay it. If I'm in a situation where I'm getting irritated and I share that with the person in front of me, I'm sharing it with you. God, the child's annoying. They get annoyed. We actually feed off each other. If someone then said to me, oh, God, Cordelia, let it go. Don't you remember how you used to scream when you were a child in a restaurant? If that person can bring it back and ground it, or if I'm that person bringing you back and grounding it, it makes the situation lighter. And if you find that you're in a situation where there is no one to ground you, you're that person. Choosing to be the person to ground yourself is taking accountability. And you can choose to have a conversation with yourself and calm yourself down, or you can choose to feed off the anger. Yeah. And I do, you know, that's something I find myself doing a lot. Like, you look at a situation and you say, okay, I can choose to continue being annoyed, or I can have this conversation with myself, but I don't really want to. There's something about humans that like to be annoyed. That is absolutely true. Very quickly, I'll just tell you. So last week I had lots of one after the other irritations, and one in particular was an insurance claim, and he was just there to make my life difficult. So all he was doing, it was really wanting this, wanting that, and I got very, very angry, and it set my whole day up on Friday for a bad day. The pharmacy then happened. Um, On the Saturday, I decided to go and have some Reiki and some massage. As I was laying there, as my mind was still, as I was starting to move out of that mindset, I realised that it wasn't these people. It wasn't the pharmacist. It wasn't the insurance claim man. It was actually me. Because at any given point, I could have made that insurance claim man life easier by giving him the information that I want he wanted but I was choosing not to because I thought you don't deserve it that's so stubborn and petty ridiculous so just to really wrap that little bit up you can't control every situation things that happen to you the weather the bus times whatever it is you can't control it but you can control your reaction to it and how you deal with it and how your head deals with it here on. And that is on you. So number seven, very quick one. (laughs) The the really bad example of that is smile. I know that sounds absolutely lunatic, but it really does work. You smile, someone smiles back. You've heard it yourself before. There's even a song about it. And I find I have that, what's it called, laugh therapy. Oh, my goodness, yeah. It's a real thing. When you laugh, or even if you don't feel like it, when you laugh or when you smile, 
So your brain is, you know, that's why you can't help but smile when you're happy. Yeah. The brain, if you force that smile. It's a simple little trick. It really is the simplest of all, because sometimes you don't feel like smiling, but it really works. And that's all I'm going to say about that one. These are the last two that I have added to this list are two that I practice all the time, particularly mindfulness and gratitude. These are something that I started years ago and it's really changed my life and mindfulness what is mindfulness it's literally being in the moment it's changed everything for me when I was growing up when I was in my 30s when I was in my 40s I found I was always thinking about the next big thing leading back to the discontented I was never in the moment. If I was in a theatre, I was thinking about the interval drink. When we get to the interval drink, I'm thinking about going in, then I'm thinking about the restaurant. I'm never there. When, you, when you're when you always thinking about something else, it, it ruffles up and it makes you feel discontented. It makes you feel irritable and all of those things that are not great for the soul. Mindfulness is good for the soul. So how do you become more mindful? For me, what I did, um, I, I actually practice it. I sit down in the morning and I practice mindfulness. And there is a, I'll, I'll add a little app. It's not an affiliate link. It's a, it's a free link and I'll add it below. Um, Headspace. Headspace is really good. You have to just practice that. Practice this. And I do it every single day just for five minutes. I do my mindfulness and it just brings me down. And if I'm having a bad pharmacy moment, bring myself back to the moment. Bring myself to the here and now. Mindfulness works every single time. And I promise you, and I promise very little, but it does. Yeah, it's just basically a good way to just create a tiny moment of happiness. Gosh, that's a lovely one. Just the moment to create a tiny moment of happiness and a memory. You will have that as a memory. Gratitude, no matter where, what, how. No matter what is going on for you, and right now you'll say, some of you will say, I've got nothing to be grateful for. Yes, you have. You have. You may not believe it right now, but I want you to think of just, even if it's three things today, right now, You, if you have a dog, yes, you're grateful for that. You're grateful that you have somebody in your life. There'll be something that you're grateful for. Even if your life right now is catastrophic, there will be something that you can be grateful for. Um... And I try and do this every single day. And I change up the gratitude so I don't have the same three things. For me, it changed my whole mindset. I'm grateful. I'm pleased. I'm happy. Yes, that's rubbish. But this is not. Over time, it gets easier and easier. It's like, oh, I don't like anything at the moment. My life is this, that and the other. But like, well, what are you grateful for? Like, well, I'm grateful for Oreo because I love Oreo. <laughs> Exactly. I'm grateful for the TV show that I can't stop watching. It sounds ridiculous, you know, every time I get my Dyson out, thank God for Dyson. I know that sounds yeah. ridiculous, <laughs> but oh my God, I do love my Dyson. Not materialistic, but yeah. No, but before it was so... Yeah, anyway, you know, that that that, that man in the concentration camp who wrote that, what is now? Oh, um, and... Man Search for Meaning. Search, man Search for Meaning, yeah. And... I love that book. God oh my yeah, you could learn so much from that. Oh. So. My last and final is listen, listen. In my job, I get to, a, I'm in a very privileged position. I get to listen to people. This is my job. This is what I do. I listen. They, perhaps it's the first time anyone has actually listened to them. We're thinking about how we're going to answer. We're not actually listening. Actively listening is wonderful. It's a wonderful, wonderful, not just a skill, but it actually makes you feel good. You're listening. Sometimes people don't want to have their problems solved. Sometimes they just want you to listen. Listen actively is my last little thing. I think you're also listening to yourself, listening to those thoughts. Oh, yes. I thought that's where you were going Some with it. Sometimes. Listening to yourself. What is going on for you? You're very happy. You're very sad. You're very angry. You're very emotional. Ask yourself. Go back. Take it back. Take it back and listen, still that mind, listen. So those are my tips on how I live my life, how I stay on top, how I fake it till I make it, all of those things. If you have any tips, if you have any, please let me know, share them with us. 
and if you've made it this far. I know this is a longer video and it's different and we're not using props. So thank you for making it this far. And if you liked it, press the like button and subscribe. Honestly, it really helps us up. 701, we're going for a thousand. <laughs> so please subscribe and ding the bell, ding the bell, and it will alert you to content that we're uploading like this every single week. You can also follow me on Pinterest and Instagram, and I'll have the handles below, and I have a website. And a lot of the subjects we've talked about today, I've actually written blogs about, so I will add it in the description, but that's Hay Spring Chicken. I know this video is a bit different, but I'm feeling more optimistic in March, and hopefully this will help you too. So for now, enjoy and thank you.